uh, with the project uh, looking at the extension of uh, a proposed light rail system uh, into uh, South Oakland County, uh, which would extend from 8 mile to uh, 16 mile, uh, covering uh, multiple jurisdictions, uh, all of which are involved with the, the task force. Um, so our charge was to uh, basically create a master plan uh, for this area, um, and we've since divided into groups and we're trying to come up with different alternatives, um, not only just about land use, but also about um, how the system will work uh, at grade and, uh, and what kind of design uh, implementation we can, we can come up with. Mm -hmm. I was asking the question, what is the sponsor? Well, the projects, like you said, they're, they're not uh, a client, so they're not, they're not paying us, but um, basically they, uh, Dr. Kim has worked with uh, different project sponsors, uh, community organizations. Um, anyone else wanna take it? For the next question. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, they, have, they had come to him to uh, utilize our uh, studio um, to assist them in this design process. Um, they have a lot of planning uh, and uh, kind of um, policy uh, in place and, and that's kind of the, the foundation and they wanted us to come in and complete uh, the design. I want to talk to the Chinese last. I want to say, is this crazy? This is completely crazy. Right? We'll come back to it. <laughs> I spent I had three trips to Beijing in 2005, six, and seven. So I've been there and worked on certifying the Beijing Olympic Village for BND. So that's my little bit of contact with Beijing. But this is crazy. So I was saying at lunch to June that I'm favoring, I'm favoring right now planning for totalitarian countries. They can just do what they execute. Tell me you have a plan, tell me your idea, good. Build it. Then it just gets done. That's fine. It's a little ruthless some days, but at least it gets done. So, so um, let's see. So what authority do you have power or do you have authority when you're doing this work? Are these are you generating ideas? How do you feel like they're interfacing with people that can actually get things done? Um, as far as, as getting things done, um, we've met with quite a few people from Berkeley and uh, SEMCOG and uh, uh, MDOT and ADOT. And uh, as far as, as that, we, we've got a lot of feedback in between. We've, we've been able to bounce ideas off of them, things that they want to see happen, things that we thought that uh, could be possible. And we kind of meshed our ideas together and, and come up with some pretty decent ideas or some pilot programs that we could think like, we could put in different places. Um, as far as authority, uh, we've been told many times to uh, don't worry about the actual implementation part of it, that's their job. Our job is to just come up with the more uh, concepts, the details, the renderings, um, to take their ideas and turn them into actual images that they can sell to the community and, and sell them on to, to get stuff going. Um, so I think in that aspect, we've. We're slowly getting there. We're, we're getting more and more information from different people. Um, and as it goes on, we find out more stuff. More people are willing to contribute uh, things that they find. Because, I mean, this is Woodward. And there's been many, many studies. And there's, there's some right now where they've just gotten like 19 million to do another study on it. Uh, um, I think SEMCOG has. So they're going to be doing their own study. And then um, I believe they're actually going to give us, WA3 and somebody else is actually going to give us a huge, their huge finding pamphlet um, once it's uh, completed. So we'll have all that information to kind of go off of. What, what kind of ideas are you all coming up with? Um, we're coming up with uh, different ideas, like uh, uh, the gentleman Dan here, um, when he was talking to a couple of the people, um, they came up with a huge promenade, like turning it into one long stretch of, you know, use the green spaces and, uh, you know, turn it into a huge walkability space and. Um, there's large uh, graveyards, and, and you know when you first look at them, there's graveyards uh, in Woodward Avenue. Yeah, it's right, actually right here. This this section right here is a gigantic graveyard, okay. and then there's uh, another one right here, and there's I think two more along there. Um, so when you look at that, you're like, that's a huge, gigantic space. And when you first think of you know cemetery or graveyard, you're not you don't want to touch it. 
But what we found out from talking to them was that uh, Berkeley, they have um, tours of their graveyard. Mm -hmm. So they were saying that you could use spaces like that to create more of an entrance way onto Woodward. You can create these pathways that are nice through a graveyard that people would be willing to walk through. Um, so like using that type of area to create a more promenade, uh, places where people can walk in and out of and off of Woodward, mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the ideas. Um, looking at more mixed use um, because the, the residential area is so close, so it's so, such a tight knit and it's just right along the back edges of a lot of the buildings. You really can't tell someone, well, I'm gonna tear your house down and then we're just gonna redo, you know, it's like you said, we're not in certain places. Um, so kind of finding out where we can implement more mixed use, how far we can go up, things like that. Um, and creating a, a like bringing in the mix, you're able to bring in people that would be willing to live and use the light rail. So you're you're building up commutership. So we were looking at stuff like that. Cool. So my next question. So in doing a corridor study like this, you've got there's a tension between natural places, and on this map I see what four downtown cores so identified. So that they they're a place type, and they have a certain walking pattern. So this, I don't think I heard the suggestion was that people are going to walk. Nine or ten miles diagonally. They want walking. to create that, but really, yeah, they, people they, actually they, walk that far. No, no, people do not walk that far. But what they want is they want to try to turn Woodward at least into a walkable environment, because um, some spaces there's just long stretches of concrete or a long wall of a building, and they want to be able to change that, or make it more inviting to where people just don't stop. Uh, and then just turn back. They want, it, if you're willing to walk it, they want it to be walkable for that person. Uh, they don't expect you to walk nine miles, and that's what the light rail would be for. <laughs> uh, but in between those stops, they want that environment uh, friendly, inviting, you know, uh, kind of like creating that environment where people would be willing to stay for a while, which some places on the would actually lack. Sure. So I'm starting to say that there's some downtown centers here, and those have certain behaviors around them, and then you've also superimposed circles at each transit stop. That's presumably what is in a half mile walk. So that would walk. actually be better um, answered by these guys. Yeah. Okay. Step, step. That's right. there. <laughs> okay. So talk, talk to me about this, and then also I'm just going to observe, you know, you drew your dots, and sometimes the downtowns don't actually fall where the transit's going to be. So right. how do you well, reconcile this? Well, what we did is we looked at Woodward, the corridor, and we looked at major uh, roadway intersections, and so those re actually represent the major roadway intersections. And obviously, as you can see, the major intersections don't necessarily correspond with the downtown cores. So our thought was then to go through, take a look, and see what exactly is a half mile from those major intersections, um, and then see you know, how much further the downtowns are. So our plan incorporates um, not only transit along the corridor, but then we also tried to come up with a way to link these downtown cores. And our thought was to introduce uh, some type of linear park, linear infrastructure um, that could actually wind through alongside the corridor. So we'd have two different types of transportation, if you will. We'd have our, well, three, the roadways, the transit, and then this linear park for walking and biking, et cetera. Other team members want to add anything? Do the circles too. <laughs> Put the center at the major mile markers as opposed to the half mile markers. Talk about that. Uh, well, I guess I first talk about the idea of nodes. Okay. Major nodes. Um, just connections from different parts of the cities, different parts. Like we always use mile roads around here. We don't cut through neighborhoods most of the time. Sure. So that's where that kind of idea came. Us. I mean, we were just on the idea of like creating maybe more trans stops between them, mm -hmm. as far as to create more ability that quarter mile TOD style. But yeah, as far as well, that's just figuring out the range in which people can walk like, half mile, quarter mile from the stop, that's where they come from. Okay. And one, there is an additional logic behind that too. If you look at those intersections, um, several of the downtowns, that is kind of you know, the major road running into downtown, so Royal Oak, for example, the crossroads 11 mile, it hits Woodward, that's going to be a main path into downtown. Um, coming off of 696, you, that's your access to Woodward Avenue. It's also an access point to downtown Royal Oak and then down south into Ferndale. So, um, 
So I have a question for you. I can see some of these little images here are beginning to capture how auto-dominated Woodward feels, and it's a pretty rough patch to wasp. So when you do a TOD plan like this, and I, I used to know my mile roads pretty well, but you can imagine a really big mile road divides, that circle is divided up into four quadrants that basically you won't cross from one to the other because the street's so hostile. You won't even, sometimes you have to cross Woodward. What's the, do we know the dimension of the Woodward right away? It's like, it's a football field, right? Wide, 200 feet, 300 feet? Do we know some, the number? Some places are 225 feet across. It's pretty imposing. I, I think an interstate superhighway is 300, is that right? And that's pr pretty much the acme of unwalkable. So at 225, if you're at the hour. Excuse me, I'd like this group to wrap up about a minute. One minute. Yes. June, come on, we're just getting going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, just a couple things to say. So just, you know, we've worked on a bunch of quarter studies that are TV quarter studies. So one is, uh, when you guys, your group reconvenes to draw new circles, right? You can draw some bigger and some smaller. Or you sort of some as fill, some as not. Whatever. These are all a little different. Second thing is, just consider those half mile markers. I don't know, if people, have people visited Chicago? Come to Chicago, you're welcome, you're here by invited, okay. Because if you look at where the commerce does well uh, today, sometimes there's legacy, like I know Nine Mile and Royal Oak, uh, or is that Fernando? Um, you know, there's inline stores are doing just fine, but sometimes when you want to start the new, the new retail bid, if that street is too wide, if the distance from one store to the other across the street is too wide or too difficult to cross, it won't work as inline walkable retail. So you look for a right of way that's no limit. In our experience, it's about 66 feet. So I don't know. Do you know the right of way widths for each of these streets? We do not. Okay. Go measure, you know, for the next go round. Because if it's too wide, you really do have four quadrants, and the circle is your idea imposed on a different physical reality. So, time's up, right? Can I, can I ask a question? Sure, please. Um, so, do we need to be mic'd? Yes. So, just to clarify, did your uh, client group, uh, uh, have they cited the rail stops for you, or is that part of your charge, is to cite the rail stops? It's part of our charge. Okay. Did your group do that? I noticed there's a map over here. The group we're moving to. So you guys, you haven't gotten to that point yet. We have some ideas and some concepts. We haven't finalized our decisions, but this is the direction we're heading. The, the only other comment I guess I'd make is that each one of those communities that you've identified has such a different character and demographic profile. Maybe some sense of that differentiation, that character, you know, as, as you're documenting your existing. And I think opportunities would flow from there. Yeah. Actually, can I comment on that? Do of course. Was it all? That's actually one of the things that Eric brought up is creating, keeping their identity between yeah. city and city, along along with creating where it is one single identity at the same time. Right. So it's kind of a mesh between the two. We're working with right now. That's. I mean, we're just starting, but that's kind of transposed. Sure. Okay, uh, next question, please. So, you again? <laughs> actually, the two of us again. Um, so, what we first started to do on the, the top row was basically just figure out some of the challenges, and then we divided uh, the the space up into its six quadrants, the six cities that we're going to be dealing with. And then what we kind of looked at is the different kind of rail stops. And of course, you know, in this type of plant, every city is going to want their own rail stop. You can't leave anybody out or you're going to have some issues. Yeah, sure. um, so we just kind of did two little spots where um, we tried to lump them in to where we could have a few where we can catch uh, two cities with this one. We can actually catch three cities with this rail stop. Uh, two here, and then some of the larger ones get their own, but at least we can catch them. And then some of the other, on the other side, uh, we can actually move it down a little into their own little section to where they can have their own rail stop. So we're looking at kind of the position and how much ownership each person gets for this rail stop. Um, now Berkeley, Huntington Woods, because they're on one side of the street, 
um, they're going to get that side of the street of the rail stop, depending on you know how much it is. And then we we looked at some different style nodes, just uh, the large commercial areas that are in this district. Um, we have uh, many many downtown areas, Royal Oak, Berkeley, things like that. Then we have some offshoots on Coolidge Highway, uh, hospital, things like this. Um, this map actually shows what are perceived as uh, known nodes, where after some of the, the first assignments, people, uh, one of the other groups was nice enough to do uh, walking, kind of talk to people. And these are the three areas that they kind of seem are the most known and recognizable places on Woodward. The zoo, right around Berkeley, the cemetery, or the um, cemetery and hospital areas. These are the three like well-known people you asked and they knew where they were at. So then we go into um, high traffic areas on the outskirts of Woodward, things that we have to pay attention to as far as the, the cities or the how, how far the zoo goes out, and there's some, some other things over here. But then I wanted to also look at what uh, high traffic areas that actually connect, and what we found was is there's actually gaps in between a lot of these spaces. And uh, right now we're looking at if we place a, a rail stop in the voids, um, which isn't normally commonly done, but can you create uh, spreading from that and create more business, or do you place the stops within the areas, which is what is normally done, uh, to just help the business that's already there, and then as that, that'll start to spread out and create uh, better nodes and, longer, and, and wider ones. So that's what we've looked at so far, as far as that. Um, now Dan will then go over his, uh, there's two portions. I wanted to ask. Is oh, go ahead. Is it in the hospital or the cemetery? Or the <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of wondering the same thing, yeah. <laughs> Seems like a co location. Yeah, yeah. As soon as they're done. Mm -hmm. um, so then we wanted to look uh, from that and also from the, the workshop that we conducted with our project sponsors um, and look at areas that uh, we kind of considered uh, prime for opportunity. Um, so. As of right now, I've identified uh, five areas along the corridor. Um, uh, right in downtown Birmingham, uh, basically the downtown as it exists right now is situated along Old Woodward, but uh, Woodward Avenue kind of juts off to the right and it's not as uh, pedestrian friendly and, and uh, as much of a downtown feel. So that's definitely an area of opportunity. Um, and then also, like it's like been said, uh, uh, linking Berkeley and the hospital and creating this uh, sort of uh, larger node uh, because of their proximity and because there's so much traffic and, uh, and activity around those areas. Um, downtown Royal Oak, uh, like Mike was saying, you know, being able to link uh, uh, the downtown with Woodward because it's, it's really offset, it's not you know, right along the corridor. Um, at, right at 696, there's actually a pretty good opportunity um, to create maybe a, a larger transit station, uh, and kind of a regional hub, and that would be right here. Uh, you have the zoo, and then across the street you have uh, a larger plot of vacant land, and because this is kind of the, uh, a major axis of commuter traffic, uh, because of the expressway, we kind of thought that you know this could be uh, a prime location where com commuters could come in uh, along the expressway and park, and then utilize the park of the new transit system. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then also Ferndale, just enhancing uh, and uh, in implementing more density there. Tell me about this stuff, especially. Um, well, we actually did uh, a precedent study. Um, it was kind of part of our second step in the process about a month ago. Um, so we looked at uh, four different uh, urban design or urban models. Um, and I, what I did was just try to um, translate what we learned from uh, the precedent study onto the map just to kind of give a conceptual uh, you know, uh, feel of what that would look like. Um, Sustainable urbanism, which obviously is your expert area of expertise, um, I try to uh, <laughs> um, I try to um, think about uh, basically just uh, as a means of applying it to transit. Um, I didn't want to go into 
you know, detail as much about land use uh, in that area. Um, so what I wanted to do was uh, create uh, better connections uh, along the cross streets because as it stands right now, the, the bus system in many instances uh, doesn't actually cross Woodward. So even if you did put a... It stops. Yeah, it actually stops. In some areas, it'll, it'll kind of stop um, along Coolidge and Judd and it doesn't actually connect. Um, right, and, uh, and I thought that, um, you know, if there's gonna be a, a major investment in light rail on this corridor, it's gonna need uh, yeah. connections at all these major cross streets. Um, also implementing more park and ride, um, just because it is such an auto-oriented uh, region, um, that that is definitely something that's gonna have to be considered. And then also uh, creating um, maybe a, possibly a bike share system uh, because there are so many downtowns that are offset from the corridor uh, that are walkable um, and by creating a, a, a bike share system people could use transit and other means to to access those. So. Cool. Two questions. Mm -hmm. Are you studying density along the corridor or pouring it in some way? Um, we, we don't have um, specific numbers at this point but uh, density is definitely one of the the big uh, areas that we're going to look at because uh, traditionally along the corridor, at least uh, uh, commercially, there's you know uh, one-story commercial uh, with yep. you know front parking. Sure. Um, that's that's pretty much the the norm along the corridor. So improving that, improving density, uh, really uh, recessed into these neighborhoods. It's it's all single-family housing for the most part. Um, you know, which except for downtown Birmingham and downtown. Yeah, the downtowns. Yeah, but but just adjacent, um, yeah. and that's also a challenge. You know, as you increase density along the avenue. You know, the, the other thing I would point you to poke around about is finding out if you could look at the census data for households without cars. Yes, it's possible to live in Detroit without a car. Oftentimes, it's driven by poverty, which is not preferred. But be surprised. I've been in Royal Oak, I've been in Birmingham. You know, there are people that do it. It'd be interesting to know and map them. Yeah. And map them. So if you could do that. Absolutely. Because don't you think this is, I mean, it's it's a change of the culture project masked as an infrastructure study. That if you actually built this, you would offer a proposition to Southeast Michigan to say maybe you don't, you can build the cars, you can own the cars, but maybe not here, you don't need one. And that'd be interesting. Yeah. Because I think you know a lot of the work that you're doing, you're really an ambassador for what you're the face of this new way of living that could happen here. You know, so um, you know, I I am a big believer that planners are advocates and you're out there um, you know just trying to make connections people can't often can't make for themselves. And so if you can tell those stories and pull them out, you'll succeed wildly. And I I will just push back on the idea that just think of the ideas and it's the other person's problem to implement them. In school, that is absolutely correct. You should think perfectly freely. But in practice, if you're just the ideas person and you hand it in and it lands with a big thump and then dust starts to collect on it, and that's a choice. I mean, you could practice that. But there are firms that make a lot of money generating reports that sit on shelves. Right? So mm -hmm. I scold you not to do that. I encourage you to be the activist that figures out how to get to you know, six out of six mayors and get them so excited that the next campaign for mayor is, you know, about your plan. Like, I'm for it more than my opponent, right? Wouldn't that be, that happened to me once and I just still have chills about it. So uh, that's, that's successful. So how about working with six different cities? How's that? Um, well, we haven't really, uh, we've seen a little bit of, uh, you know, the, the problems that it creates, but because they're all invested in this task force, they're already working together, so we really haven't play, had to play the role of that, you know, in between or that mediator that's that's bringing them all together. Definitely at our um, at our first meeting and uh, our little workshop that we did, you saw different opinions. There, Berkeley was well represented, so you saw a lot of interest in Berkeley and a lot of uh, conversation about that. But all in all, they're all working to uh, you know one common goal. So what are these drawings? What's this, what's this building right here? Is this a building so, in the middle of Woodward Avenue? Uh, that's our ideas about the improvements. 
So I just uh, made th uh, three of the three models. Yes. So this is the first one. I think that's the the most in initial one here. Uh, we're just uh, considering to make the the rail goes in, in the middle of the of the end. Yes. So it will uh, make us to to cancel one lane, one one okay. car lane. So uh, after that, we we added the two uh, bike lanes on both sides of the road, uh, of the avenue. So after that, we just uh, um, maybe we 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 plant some trees in the in the uh, four four lines here. Maybe we will make the the road much greener. And that's our uh, first initial design here. Uh, we will probably uh, maybe just uh, cancel two lanes on the avenue now. And so uh, it introduce the, the track in the in the middle of the road. That, so that that's the station here. We we have the both both sides platforms. So uh, and we just made some design at the at the, the U turn U turn section for the cars. Uh, the cars sh should go to this lane here. That's the U turn lane, uh, and they should be wait here because there's a traffic light. That uh, because if the if the, the the light rail goes goes along this way, they couldn't turn. They just have to wait here until the light turns and they can go go to go to the U turn now. So that will limit the people who who use their private cars, I think. Yeah. And also also we have two uh, crazy ideas here. <laughs> That's the crazy ones. <laughs> Bring them on. So uh, this one is uh, I was thinking to um, build a building just uh, above the, the track. Uh, maybe it's a commercial building, maybe, maybe it's apartments, maybe it's some with other functions, maybe with its factory, all everything's okay. That will, will narrow down the the space of the of the avenue. So we can see um, the, the whole avenue was divided into two into two small streets that are walkable and are friendly for people to walk in inside it. And maybe we can use make use some of the, these spaces as pedestrians in both sides, mm -hmm. and we can make it as the maybe some streets in Birmingham that are workable, very walkable. Mm -hmm. So this this crazy idea makes the the real railway runs just on the on the ground. But this idea, I just elevated the the rail the track okay. into the second floor. So the first floor could be make use at, into as uh, maybe retails, maybe some other functions mm -hmm. for people to, it's more likely to be a, a commercial street now. Mm -hmm. So I think this one maybe will face too many problems such as noise and <laughs> such affections by the, by the track, by the rail. Maybe I think it's quite, not quite easy to realize, but mm -hmm. I think it's just the crazy ideas. They're not crazy. So <laughs> June and I had lunch today and I said Woodward needed a building in the middle. So this is exactly expecting to see. Thank you. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing I was going to say is you've done a good job of a array of choices. Can you do one more, which is the building in the middle, mm -hmm. but the train not underneath, but the train taking up. Both sides. Yeah, both sides, right? Taking up uh, uh, travel mm -hmm. lines, automobile lanes. Yeah. Because I think that's a, not a very pleasant building. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to be under there if you didn't have to. Yes. Um, so do one more. But it's not crazy. It's, it's really, really neat. Who Did owns you, who owns this land? Uh, the, the land now yes. is just uh, um, you know it's grass. It's very wide. Very it's wide. The, yeah, the median. The median. So yeah, so I, I know whose land is it? State. Yeah. 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 Have you talked to MDOT? <laughs> <laughs> they were at the workshop. Uh, we didn't present that. Yeah, 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 it's just the uh, finished files today. You know, it's just crazy enough an idea that uh, under the guise of jobs and economic development, you might actually get a governor that had passion about this to call up MDOT and say, give me a 64 right away. We'll lease it, we won't sell it, and so we'll give you 50 years or something out of building or something like that. But that's really cool. Really cool. Thank you. No, Who's the tall guy? Steve. Hi. Hi, good to see you. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming. It's great. We're having a rolling conversation. So, so the next group. Gene is telling us there's time. Is it time to ask a question of this group? Or? Uh, I think you should have time. I think you should say. Well, we can. About my, go to mine now? I'm in the group. Yeah. Do you guys order that?
Um, Unless Constance would like to ask. Yeah, I'm just for one minute. So. One, one minute? Yes. Okay, so quickly, a question about context. Are you studying and mapping and analyzing the, um, the other light rail proposals along Woodward? Yes, we've looked at the M1 and things like that. Um, okay. We've come across, actually come across some, some fake ones that uh, actually seem like they could work. Um, yeah, they're uh, salt fresh, water? Fresh, fresh water, water light water. rail. Right. Yeah, and uh, it seemed to be very thorough, but um, as far as like the ones that were actually put out, we have like I think these sort of bratwurst shaped chunks of the corridor are very, <laughs> they're very, they make very compelling graphics, but again, I think um, particularly as you start to think about siting um, stops, you know, these things are generally, generally determined, <coughs> you know, there's all sorts of criteria, technical, you know, which, you know, which system is being used, you know, you talked about car length, traffic speed, so, um, <coughs> You know, this political reality that you're talking about, about giving everybody a stop, you know, there's also this technical overlay that, and, and again, the quarter doesn't stop and end in your study area, right? So I think some sense of, uh, you know, what will precede this, hopefully, is the Detroit chunk, right? Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> From New Center to uh, the Entertainment District. Uh, and then just very quickly, I want to reinforce what uh, Mr. Farr mentioned about uh, density. I uh, appreciate seeing three dimension. I think if there's any way you guys could do a, uh, a massing model of, of just the, the FAR in the, in the corridor, it would be very instructive for you as you move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so last one. Last one, not least. Kill it. How you doing? So the project is like right now. Okay, so first of all, I don't have any background in urban design. So for me, this was an interesting project to kind of educate myself on the process of, of urban design and how we plan. Um, but when we went into this phase, um, what we basically focused on was some of the key challenges and key opportunities that we can get from the corridor itself. Um, and one of the things, one of the first things we looked at is connectivity. I mean, that's probably our biggest challenge, is how do we connect the downtowns? Um, where do we connect them? How, what are the sizes? What are the functions of, of nodes if we create nodes? Um, are they just for transport or do they become something else? Um, and how do people get to back and forth between those connections? Um, the second challenge is how to keep pedestrians safe. They're not going to want to stay along this corridor or walk it if they don't feel safe along it. Um, so the idea of, you know, these were just some preliminary sketches of do we create roundabouts in certain aspects? Um, transit locations, where do we put them? Parking and access. People still are going to drive it, so we'll have to, they'll have to park, and how do, how is, do those become accessible? Um, and then one of the major aspects that I thought is Woodward itself is a historic corridor. It's known for vehicles. I mean, that was the whole reason it was created and that's what it's known for. So how, in implementing all these new ideas, how can we still maintain the historic quality of Woodward and not lose the idea of the dream cruise and all the big ideas sure. that, that happen along it? And then lastly, the key challenge is phasing and how do we phase it? From there, we looked into the opportunities, and as I spoke with the key challenges, we also have opportunities to create nodes. So we can create these nodes and, and make them, give them different functions, such as an art. You know, one is entertainment, shopping, leisure, such as the Detroit Zoo would be a major leisure node. Um, other key opportunities were the creating interchanges, such as the 10-mile interchange where the zoo, the Detroit Zoo currently exists. Um, also, the 13-mile node where the Beaumont Hospital is, that's another key node um, that we looked into. And from there, we, we kind of evaluated some of the, the primary goals, um, and as in, in looking at these primary goals, are how we define the secondary goals in relation to those. Um, so the primary goals would include uniformity, walkability, safety, sustainability, vitality, public domain, connectivity, 
diversity, practicality, and uniqueness. Um, when we look, think about uniform, uniformity, um, it's obviously how do we maintain this, this uniform corridor. We could, it could be as simple as maybe putting some fences in so that all the edges be, be read as one. It could be placing art, um, landscaping. Can I pause and ask, why do you want uniformity? That was one of the things that was brought up in the workshop and one of the groups that I was in is they wanted um, Woodward to be a uniform corridor to, to make people walk it, to make it feel safe. Um, but at the same time, I think as Nick pointed out, they also do want to hold on to that uniqueness yeah. per each down I'm, district. I'm just consider adjusting the word because uniformity and walkability are hostile conflict. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, as far as walkability, um, one of the things that we really decided was that we need to create pedestrian paths. Um, and se separate. Is that a sidewalk? Not necessarily just a sidewalk. I mean, it could be a sidewalk, but it could also be more than just a sidewalk. It could be something that's interactive. Um, and we need to separate those from the traffic areas. Is your partner going to also present? I don't know what your work has. Um, possibly. If, if, if she wants to, sure. I, she's dying too much. No, I don't think she is. <laughs> she is, she really she is too much. Sure. Well, if we might make her on the next one. Um, so let me just sum this one up real sure. quick. And um, and looking at safety, you know, let's slow the speeds down. Let's separate the pedestrians. Um, sustainability. Try to revitalize what is there um, and implement public transit for uh, public. Um, for public domain, um, versatile activities, and limit the private ownership, making it more public. Um, I'll skip connectivity. Diversity, just rezone and utilize more mixed use. Um, and create cultural nodes. Um, practicality, utilize as much existing as possible and, and incorporate things in phases, or construction phases. And for uniqueness, Let's bring a new idea, something that makes Woodward the icon of the Midwest. So yeah, how, innovation. Yes, innovation. Yeah. Um, CC, keynote. CC, CC, one, one second. This 10 is too many. You've got to you know, distill it down. I think that mine can, you know, Andrea says six. I'm good at odd numbers, five or seven. I think with 10 is too many, and several of these do cancel each other out. Sure. So just, you know, get that right. Five. Aim for five. And make them really compelling so that somebody could maybe even alliterate it, you know, the D words or the C words or something like that. Sure. But a good good first pass. Okay. C C C C right. Okay, so the keynotes. Uh, I think the, the board word okay. I think the board word avenue is a, a complex complex function. Uh, so I think we should add some uh, keynotes to uh, to the people relax and enjoy he, their life. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think uh, I should add uh, keynotes to the 30 mile group. And another is the 10 mile group. So. Uh, so uh, in the thirty mile road, there are there is a hospital. So yes. uh, so the um, people can uh, grow out in the building and uh, build the nature mm -hmm. um, and in the ten mile road. There is a zoo. I think the zoo is important. So, how can we connect the hospital, the zoo, to the 30 mile road and 10 mile road uh, to make people relax and comfortable? 
So I think we should take some key notes to the city model and the development. In, in addition to that, what we after we decided on those being our keynotes, um, we then wanted to look at the downtown areas, how those connect. And so basically what this sketch is, is black being Woodward and cross streets. Um, the purple is our interchange nodes. The green is existing green space that happens or proposed green space. And then the downtown areas are in blue. Um, and then on here we have a red line showing a continuous walking bike path that connects all of those districts. And the idea behind this is not that it goes straight along Woodward, that it really kind of like weaves and interacts with, with the corridor and outside of the corridor. So it gives people this idea of experiment, experience and enjoyment and really adding interest um, to their life. And then, from there, we focused on the 13-mile node and what exactly would that look like? What shape does it take? How would we implement it? Um, one of the reasons it is a key node, other than being the hospital, there's also a, a big plaza and parking lot that's located in that area, which Beaumont owns. So if we can get the hospital on board, it'd be a great opportunity to really um, develop there. And through some of CC's original research, she had looked at the idea of doing some roundabouts, which I thought was an interesting concept to kind of slow traffic down a little bit. Um, so in the 13 mile node, that's one of the things we would implement, would be a roundabout. Um, the red here would be our continuous bike path. And this green that you see is the idea of placing the transit hub actually underground and allowing the natural grass, which obviously is parking lot now, but basically extending it up and over and allowing it just to become a grass pavilion for maybe an art node. And that function could then take on the idea of like an outside amphitheater, um, which would then add entertainment for people that live or work at the hospital and it kind of becomes the art district. Um, and that's basically where we're at. Um, this is just a representation of the transit being able to go underground and then we would pop it back up and then go back under at the keynotes. Thank you. Thank you. Really interesting stuff. I have a question for you. Sure. When you're talking to your sponsors, mm -hmm. do you feel like the language you use connects to them? Is there a language that's used in school that when you go out in the real world, mm -hmm. there are words they don't recognize or glaze over, or, or you feel like they're really excited? Um, it, de it depends, because when I have spoken to some of the sponsors, one of the things I noticed is because I'm not, maybe it's because I'm not an urban planner, yeah. I tend to look at things as let's add some more green space, because for me personally, I relate to um, green space as opposed to just urban, you know, urban buildings um, in the urban context. And I know they're very sensitive to that because green means money. Um, so in that aspect, I guess some of the language they don't relate to. But um, it's, as far as some of the, just the wording, I think they understand. Yeah. I guess I was trying to get a, a thank you. That was a good answer. I was going to say, I, one thing I think that is true is a lot of times, you know, walk, the people you're dealing with that have a power to implement your plan are a mayor or a city council. The mayor might have been on the school board and then went to the parks board and now is mayor and knows nothing about city planning or transit oriented development or any of this stuff, right? So oftentimes you are the front line educator, even for people with much more authority and a title that you don't have. And so that's always a, a challenge. And I think you're doing fine. I just, I'm mindful of it because this is really hard stuff to communicate as a value proposition in a down economy in Michigan where there's this incredible skepticism that says, look, in 100 years, we're still all going to be driving around in a car and I don't know what you're talking about here. And where's my parking, right? So there's, that you've got to overcome all that and make a compelling case that 
this, you know, you, I'll, you'll hear a little bit from, the, from me about this later if you're still there, but, you know, that there's often triple and quadruple messaging. You're talking to the mayor who's thinking about re-election and legacy, and then you're talking to the council, which wants to be the next mayor. You're talking to citizens at large, then you're talking to MDOT. There's like four or five people you're trying to sort of stroke and urge and nudge all slightly differently. So anyway, just, I think it was a good presentation, but just, that was the thing I was struck by. And uh, in terms of the drawings, I think this is really innovative. Um, and you'll see from see later on a project we did that built CC's idea. So it's, we like that idea. Like, same one, I like that one, I like that one. I'll take them both. So, um, in terms of grade separation, one issue is um, for your consideration if what you wanted was long, long haul bicycle commuting. I don't know if that's what you're after, but that might be the thing rather than grade separating the transit. I'd run the transit through the intersections, piss off the cars, is what I would do. But, but that's just me. But if you said, we really want to design this as a bike, bike route so that people in Birmingham will commute to Royal Oak or to New Center or you know whatever, then privilege the bike. That's just a consideration. That's a really hard uh, coming together point for all the stuff. What is that green that, little wrapper? That's the idea of, it, you can kind of see it in this sketch of a section. Oh, that's that what you're saying. The transit's nature underground goes over. and then nature goes just over, over as a path. As a bridge. Yeah. Okay. So that you can connect without having to go around. That would be a hard sell. But of course. Do you want to say, say or go? Uh, since you're joining us. Yeah, just a couple of comments. Uh, I also agree the issue of uniformity you know, is, is a difficult issue. I think what you want to look for is uh, an element or elements that are consistent to Woodward and then other elements that are consistent to the surrounding communities and somehow find a way to bring those together. Um, on the issue of green space, um, given the topic uh, today about sustainability, I think there's an opportunity to uh, do biosoils and add green all along the river. And, and this bicycle path, for example, could go in and out of those soils. I mean, that's something I think you might want to consider. Uh, and the third question I had is, are, are, is it an assumption that the <coughs> that the mass transit's in the center of No, that was just uh, where we thought that it would best be implemented. Um, partially because the idea that by putting it in the center, we could potentially locate car parking also in the center, and then that would leave walkability along the edges for the businesses. So it gives people more of a sense of gathering. Well, I guess it goes to the nature of the transit, but uh, I know in Detroit that's a big issue. Exactly. Right? And I will tell you, tell you that we did initial studies for him on the rail, and we strongly said it should be at the curb or, or one lane out if you're going to try and encourage development. And for walkability, you want it to be a system that is relatively slow moving that you can easily, safely get on and off. Now, the city doesn't agree with that, but it looks like the city's going to be overruled. <laughs> but if you go to Portland or, or cities like that, you normally see it on the curb. On the other hand, there's no reason why you can't move back and forth depending on the situation. You know, like I was in Istanbul recently, and the light rail there is on the curb, it's in the middle, the two tracks are together sometimes. I mean, it's, it, I don't even know if it's light rail, it could be fast bus or whatever. So that's something else you want to see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, 4.30 now, so. Oh, perfect. Well, you can, can I get at sure. least one of the yeah. first, last ones? You get the last one. Yeah. <laughs> So, great book if you don't have it. You know, yeah. <laughs> this is on, and we'll get you, you can find this on the internet, so, but I want you to steal this. So, page 126 is the sustainable neighborhood diagram. And so, you know, for your consideration, particularly for the team, this is doubling back, but it applies to your open space comments as well. Um, in a TIA transit served corridor, my strategy is to uh, use open space minimally. Strategically, this is the place where density should happen, where lots of activity should be. Yes, you need a right amount of open space, but this is definitely not the place to build a new central park or to 
you know, uh, exclude new, taller, denser buildings, and for the, in fact, the whole region to migrate over some decades and generations to in the Woodward Quarter, Jefferson, and Grand River Quarters, you know, that sort of stuff. So, um, but anyway, the diagram here, I point to it only to say that that median in Woodward really does look like one of the kind of uh, green buffer edges that sustainable urbanism says is a unit of infrastructure in a way that it isn't now. It could filter your stormwater, it could have your geothermal field underneath it, it could have, you know, 10 or 20 other things going on there. So um, it really is a, it's a prime piece of real estate. I think, like the dean, you're the dean, right? I was the dean. You were the dean, oh my god. I'm not dean anymore. Okay. Well, you sound like a dean. It was very, very, very good. I'm very, very good. Used to, yeah. Okay, you're, you're good at it anyway. Um, yeah. Well, can we call you dean anyway? Sure. Okay. But anyway, just back to the idea that here it's a building, you know, other places it could be, you know, a rain facility, stormwater facility. And I do, you know, absolutely get rid of the uniform. Because think about it. I mean, if you were on a light rail ride on this, wouldn't it be neat if you know, you're in Birmingham and has a Birmingham field, you know, a half mile? different and sometimes it's tight, sometimes it's wide, sometimes it's overgrown, sometimes it's urban. Oh my god, that's delightful. You want that variety. That's that's rich. That's so just cross that out. And if you if the person that told you to write that has a problem with it, have a call me. Because I, I really <laughs> think it's the wrong thing to ask for. There's I understand the sentiment, but bury it in some other form. So time's up, right you? Where are you? What's next? What's that? Uh, well, I just want to thank everyone for coming to uh, this uh, story with you. We haven't yeah, done this before, so it looks, looks like it's fun. Maybe we should do this every year. So uh, thanks, Sibu, and uh, Hansel Smoto, and a um, bunch of other students who came to the, this review. And uh, you, should, you guys should stick around because you're going to have a panel discussion for each some 10 minutes. So you are, do you want to explain? Yeah. Well, I'm sure. So yes, join us in uh, 10 minutes for the uh, Sustainable Urbanism Dialogue. Douglas Farr, Stephen Vogel, Professor June Kim, and Marja Winters from the city of Detroit. Oh, cool. Marja just called me and said that she's going to be late. Oh my goodness. All right. But she's on here for a week. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, June. Thank you. Yeah.